this is all Aaron the Bookwister. Today I'm introduce you to this almighty book. Who was J.R.R. Tolkien? The Who Was series by Pam Bolak Polak and Meg Belviso. Bel Bel this book, uh, as you can see, is a biography and it tells about the life of one of my favorite authors, J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit. Young, J Young Tolkien, you could read him right at the age four, and he loved mythology and learned a lot of other languages. And he studied philosophy in Harvard and he became a professor later there. And he met with a club called the Inklings and with each other. And there he met a, a guy named Jack. Now you might say, ha, huh, Jack, seriously, what does he have to do with any of this? And may I add that Jack is only a nickname for this rather hugely famous person. His real name, mind you, is C.S. Lewis, the author of the Chronicles of Narnia series. And I'll, and he's much loved. The two immensely fa famous author, J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, with the with the with the inklings, a mem a bar club member, they exchanged ideas of stories, and together they exchanged ideas of stories, poetry, and what not. And that is quite, you know, surprising to know for me that your one of two of your famous authors exchanged each other's knowledge. And made two made awesome books. J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. They're pretty famous. And uh, and soon and soon enough, J. Uh, Jack Lewis Jack Lewis died before J.R.R. Tolkien did, and Tolkien was very sad. Quote, quote I'm quoting. Uh, what was, he said that I am already a a tree with its leaves all falling out, but Jack's death was like a axe blow by my roots, and that basically means J.R.R. Tolkien is already rather old, but and he has a fragile health. But Jack's but Jack Jack Lewis's death resulted into a heavy casualty in his mental mind, I guess. Um, so, J.R.R. Tolkien first made his own imaginary language, and he began to think what kind of people wrote, um, spoke his language. And then he made an awesome, he made some awesome books. He, he imagined a rhythm called Middle Earth, full of elves, dwarves, men, knights, and wizards fighting against the evil Lord Sauron and his army of orcs. That, and J.R.R. Tolkien was the first to demand that adults deserved fantasy too. At that time, fantasy was also known as children's story children's stories and it is so too now but these not so much at that time they thought fantasy you see like with elves and dwarves like things like that should be for children rather rather young children too but J.R.R. Tolkien demanded that ordinary adults could, should read these books too and he wrote his masterpieces and that was the proof of that and J.R.R. Tolkien he fought in World War One that's a little bit of random information 
and yeah, he had a good long life, and in his life, he wrote the Hobbit, he wrote the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which includes, mind you, the Fellowship of the Ring, and the Two Towers, and also the Return of the King. And then there were, and also there was some companion novels like The Silly Marion and such and such. And J.R.R. Tolkien's brilliance is seen throughout the ages. And if you haven't read any of his books, you better go to the nearest bookstore and run for the nearest copy of one of J.R.R. Tolkien's books. And like always, your bookbuster, Aaron the bookbuster. Gotta go, my friends. Mm-mm, gotta go indeed.